About 635 light years away is a planet that looks a lot like home, just bigger. Kepler 22b orbits a star like our sun, sits comfortably in the habitable zone, and might be wrapped in oceans. It's Earth-like, but supersized. So what if we swapped Earth for this planet twin? Would we thrive or just get crushed? Let's find out. Kepler 22b lives in a star system with just one known planet itself. No siblings, no moons to speak of, just one lonely rock doing laps around its star. That star, Kepler-22, is a G5-type main-sequence star, a bit smaller and cooler than our Sun, but still in the same stellar family. Its surface temperature sits around 5,518 Kelvin, and it shines at about 79% of the Sun's brightness. Think of it as the Sun's slightly dimmer, more chill cousin. Still, it places Kepler-22b in the cosmic sweet spot where life could exist, at least in theory. This is called the habitable zone, the orbital Goldilocks zone, where temperatures might allow for liquid water. It takes about 290 Earth days to complete a full orbit. Based on its distance and the star's energy output, the planet's temperature is estimated at 22 degrees Celsius, 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the kind of weather you'd expect on a warm, clear afternoon in California. Sounds ideal, but only if the atmosphere plays along. Kepler-22b isn't just Earth-like, it's supersized. It falls into a category astronomers call super-Earths. Rocky planets that are larger than Earth, but not quite bloated enough to be gas giants like Neptune. Kepler-22b is estimated to be about 2.4 times Earth's radius, and more than 9 times its mass. Basically, imagine Earth, but after bulking season. That added bulk means one thing for sure. Gravity. Surface gravity on Kepler-22b is likely around 2.07 times stronger than what you're used to. So if you weigh 70 kilograms on Earth, you'd weigh over 140 kilograms there. Walking around would feel like wading through wet cement. Running? Forget it. Even standing around complaining about it would leave you winded. And that's just gravity. We haven't talked about the air yet. Thanks to its size, scientists suspect Kepler-22b might be wrapped in a thick, dense atmosphere, the planetary equivalent of a weighted blanket. Sounds cozy, but it comes with a catch. Extreme surface pressure. Imagine standing at the bottom of Earth's ocean. Now take away the scuba gear. Not ideal. That kind of pressure could also force water into a supercritical state, a weird in-between phase that's neither fully liquid nor gas. Basically, it's water that forgot how to behave. You definitely wouldn't want to drink it. You might not even want to touch it. Still, Kepler-22b might be mostly ocean-covered. But here's the thing. We don't know what kind of ocean we're dealing with. It could be salt water, fresh water, sulfuric acid, or something so alien it doesn't even have a name yet. And the depth could be a gentle puddle or a bottomless planetary trench. So pack your floaties just in case. The atmosphere is a big wild card, and it could swing the planet in either direction. If Kepler-22b is a thick, heat-trapping atmosphere, it could trigger a runaway greenhouse effect, similar to what turned Venus into a smoldering wasteland. In that scenario, sunlight gets in, but heat can't escape. Surface temperatures could soar, building oceans into dense clouds of steam, turning the planet into a high-pressure, high-temperature oven. Any chance of life, human or alien, would be vaporized. But on the flip side, if the planet has little or no atmosphere, you get the opposite problem. No insulation. Without an atmospheric blanket to trap warmth, temperatures would swing wildly between day and night, scorching under direct sunlight, then plummeting to freezing as soon as darkness falls. Think Mercury, where surface temperatures can swing by over 600 degrees Celsius in a single day. Either extreme would make life as we know it eh, complicated. And if you're sitting there wondering how we even start to make sense of planets like Kepler-22b, how we calculate surface gravity, model atmospheres, or estimate temperatures light years away, well, that's where today's sponsor, Brilliant, really comes in handy. Brilliant helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. But what really sets it apart is how you learn. 
Instead of just watching someone explain a concept, you're solving problems, experimenting with ideas, and learning by doing. It's all interactive, so you're not just memorizing facts, you're building real intuition. And that kind of active learning, it's been shown to be up to six times more effective than passively watching videos. Since we're deep in the weeds of planetary science today, I definitely recommend checking out Brilliance Science and Physics courses. They help you make sense of the universe at every level, from the mechanics of simple machines to the mind-bending physics of black holes. You'll explore the physical principles that drive modern technology. Learn to think like an engineer as you design circuits, gear systems, and stable bridges. And most importantly, you'll develop scientific intuition through hands-on visual problem solving. And these aren't your average tutorials. Every course is built by a team of award-winning educators, researchers, and professionals from places like MIT, Google, Microsoft, and Stanford. If you want to sharpen your thinking and make the universe a little less confusing, head to brilliant.org slash stay curious. You'll get a 30-day free trial plus 20% off your annual premium subscription. Just hit the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen to start exploring science the hands-on way. All right, back to Kepler-22b. Let's talk about air, or the lack of anything you'd actually want to inhale. Kepler-22b's atmosphere, if it exists, likely contains light gases like hydrogen and helium, which are common on larger planets due to their stronger gravity holding onto these elements. But here's the issue. Oxygen, the stuff you need to not die, is probably in very short supply, or missing altogether. So unless you're into asphyxiation-themed vacations, you'll need some serious breathing gear just to stay conscious. Then there's the water, which might look inviting from orbit, but don't even think about sipping it. With the planet's pressure and unknown chemistry, that ocean could be laced with heavy metals, acidic compounds, or other toxins. You might step in expecting a warm bath and end up with something closer to battery acid. Not exactly spa day material. So, what if we brought Kepler-22b into our own backyard? Same orbit, same sun, just a bigger, wetter version of Earth spinning where our planet used to be. The first thing that would change isn't the surface, it's the space around it. Kepler-22b's greater mass could cause a subtle shift in the gravitational balance of the solar system. Nearby planets and moons might drift, wobble, or get nudged into new orbits. But it wouldn't be catastrophic. Down on the surface, things would feel heavy. We've talked about its times two gravity, but now imagine our entire civilization trying to function under it. Buildings would need reinforcements, planes would struggle to lift off, and walking uphill that's now an extreme sport. And then there's the question of habitability. And just like before, it all depends on the atmosphere. If Kepler-22b brings its thick, heat-trapping atmosphere with it, you're looking at a world straight out of a survival horror manual. The crushing surface pressure, the intense heat, and an atmosphere likely rich in hydrogen or other unbreathable gases would make it impossible to survive without full environmental suits and life support systems. The sky would be a hazy, toxic blur in the oceans, probably closer to boiling cauldrons than tranquil blue seas. But if it arrives with little or no atmosphere, that's a different kind of nightmare. Without insulation, temperatures would swing violently, from searing heat under the sun to bitter cold the moment night falls. Think blistering days and frozen nights on repeat. You might dodge the pressure, but you'd need thermal protection, artificial air, and probably a heating system strapped to your back. Either way, Earth-like life would need more than just sunscreen and optimism to survive. But here's the optimistic angle. If we could terraform it, adjust the atmosphere, regulate the climate, and seed breathable air, Kepler-22b could offer more surface area, more water, and potentially a more stable climate. Gravity would still be a beast, but with the right tech, it might just be a second chance. Assuming there's land to stand on, and we don't immediately get flattened by the pressure. So, is it worth the switch? On paper, Kepler-22b looks like Earth's big brother, but in practice, it's an entirely different beast. Kepler-22b is a fascinating possibility, a potential second chance, 
but Earth, with all its imperfections, is still the only planet we know that works for us. At least here, you don't need a pressure suit just to breathe, or worry that the ocean might melt your face off. Maybe Earth isn't so bad after all. If you enjoyed this trip through space and super Earths, go ahead and hit that like button. And subscribe for more science stories, cosmic what ifs, and the occasional light existential crisis. Catch you next time, and as always, stay curious.